My dad's been a radio engineer for over 30 years. Legally, he builds radio transmitters that pump out hundreds of kilowatts of RF energy on huge radio towers broadcasting to millions of people. But this little button on this little radio broadcasting like 5 watts? Right now, the FCC could arrest him if he presses it. Or, or at least fine him. I think that's crazy, so I finally convinced him to join me in studying to take a test and become a licensed amateur radio operator. So we'll both be able to press the button. In the US, there's a huge community of amateur radio operators, or hams for short. There's a whole history to how they got that name, but what's relevant today is in spite of being a radio engineer his whole life, my dad never became a ham. To me, radio's a lot of black magic. And throw on top of that the fact that hams are always slinging around weird terms like QRT, or using Morse code, or as they call it, CW, and they call themselves weird things like NK7U. But we're going to cut through all that jargon and learn this stuff. My dad and I are going to try to get our own amateur radio licenses. Why? Well, there's a lot of fun stuff that we could do legally. Agencies like the FCC in the US police the airwaves. We have FM radio here, and technically there's nothing preventing me from grabbing this little transmitter I bought on Amazon and broadcasting my own signal over a clear channel station. But that's not legal. Even if there isn't a station broadcasting on a certain frequency, I can't just turn on my own transmitter. That's called pirate radio. And while that sounds cool, it can create a lot of headaches. In the US, we have licenses for radio operators because the idea is people who know what they're doing can use the radio waves responsibly. A licensed ham wouldn't blast out a bunch of noise and interfere with other people's signals. In fact, hams even help in emergencies when other communications are down. There's the Skywarn program supporting weather forecasters when there are big storms. There's ARIES, the Amateur Radio Emergency Service, a bunch of volunteer hams who help when disaster strikes. And a lot of advancements in radio, from antenna design to digital communication protocols, come out of the ham community. So I convinced my dad to take the test with me. There are three levels of ham operators in the US. Technician, general, and extra. Basically, as you skill up, you'll get access to more frequencies. And the more frequencies, the more chance you have to do long distance and experimental communication. Like, did you know you can bounce a radio signal off the moon from your own backyard? Or there's a ham radio setup on the ISS whizzing overhead. That thing's called ARIS, or Amateur Radio on the ISS, and it lets you talk directly to astronauts in space. November 6, Radio Sierra X-Ray. Over, over. Okay, November 6, Radio Sierra X-Ray. We've got you loud and clear aboard the International Space Station. Welcome aboard. It's great to talk to you again, Craig. To say radio offers a ton of fertile ground for learning for a couple guys who love tech is an understatement. And it's not all deep science, either. Ham radio has all kinds of fun quirks to it. Like, did you know it's illegal to broadcast music over amateur radio bands? Well, except maybe if you sing Happy Birthday directly to another ham. On the topic of illegal things, you can't do any business on amateur bands. And what about swearing? No, not allowed. And what if one of my dad's radio stations has a transmitter that breaks down? Could you switch to broadcasting on an amateur frequency temporarily? No. Well, unless doing so would prevent harm to humans in immediate danger or for the protection of property. Ham radio has a ton of fascinating history, and the community is probably smaller today with how ubiquitous the internet is, but it's still ripe for advancing the science and wonder of RF. Studying for this thing is actually quite daunting for me. I do software development, and I know my way around code. I also know some of the basics of electronics. Like, you touch a 9-volt battery to your tongue, and it gives you a happy tingle if it's still good. But take a look at a map like this. This is a map of the APRS, the Automatic Packet Reporting System. Hams eat this stuff up, but I mean, what does any of this mean? I know from meteorology that WX means weather, and if I click on one of those, it looks like a little weather station. So that's cool. But if I click on one of these towers, R60M, antenna HAAT 80 foot, C141.3, what does all that mean? Well, it means a lot. And the ham community communicates a lot of info in a tiny amount of space. That was born out of necessity back in the day because communication was slow and limited early on, but all that terminology stuck. So studying is really important if you want to pass the exam and become a ham. Right now my main intention is to get the beginner technician license. I do have this general study guide, but honestly, I get hung up a lot on the terminology, so I don't think I'll pass that one. So do you think you're ready for the test today? Oh, I did. Until your mom said, I know you'll pass. She jinxed it. Well, maybe. Hopefully, hopefully at least pass the technician test. I, I do think I'll pass the technician test. So which tests are you planning on taking? Uh, I'm hoping to go for all three. First two I feel pretty good about. 
The third one is I don't. I have not been hamming it up uh, for the last 40 years. <laughs> but you're I, a radio engineer. You should know the stuff like I, the back here. <laughs> I do it. In fact, the back of my hand I was tempted to use. There's a couple of questions that are really tough. <laughs> so. Now, we're not allowed to record the test. In fact, we're not allowed to bring a phone, a pager, or even a smartwatch into the test center. And unlike my high school days, I can't even bring this graphing calculator, though they do allow a small basic calculator since a few questions require a little bit of math. It's been a while since I did long division. So since we can't record the test, we'll skip to right after. So how did you do? Well, I passed the first one pretty well. I passed the second one pretty well. And then the third one I missed by one. So <laughs> the first time and then the you first took time. it again. <laughs> I took it again thinking, dude, what are the chances I'll pass? I'll, I'll get the same kind of test. And it was a little harder. And I think I missed by more than one that one. Yeah. So. And I passed the technician, but I did not pass the general. I had 19 out of 35, which mm -hmm. is far below a passing grade. <laughs> Do you have a radio picked out yet? Uh, I do. If I passed the general, I had decided I was going to get a Yezu uh, Model 65 or equivalent. And I got this Baofeng mostly because it was cheap. Mm -hmm. And uh, with my technician class, I don't have a lot of privileges yet, but I have enough to do some fun stuff. What's the selectivity on that one? Yeah, I don't know what that means. That's why I don't have the general <laughs> license. But uh, it's still illegal for us to press this button mm -hmm. until we get a call sign from the yeah. FCC and we're in their database. That is one of the questions they harp on a lot. When is it legal for you to do the thing? When you have a license. And uh, what do you think we should do first with our license once we get it? Mm -hmm. You go on a trip and I talk to you. How about that? <laughs> or we could just try to communicate with each other. All right, so you programmed our radios. And if I turn this on... Yes. Wait, on, on this radio, I have the top is that, and then the bottom is the weather radio. And one other thing, too, is I noticed you have this little short antenna, and I have this yeah. very long one. I was reading online, this is so much better. For Why that, would that radio. Be? Okay. Probably for that radio. Yeah, so the, the antenna, the refined antenna design world, uh, it's possible this antenna with this receiver is better as a match, but it's also possible that antenna on this one would be better. But most, most stock radios, people recommend getting a higher gain antenna. I haven't contacted anybody yet. I've never pressed the button and said anything to anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have. Yes, I contacted K0KYZ. Yes. Try to say that in the uh, alpha mode. Uh, okay, hold That on. is not correct. Oh, this was British. Let's try it. Oh, okay. This one. Kilo yeah, Zero, on. Kilo, Yankee. Is this the only one I don't remember? Zulu. 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 Okay. So yours is Kilo, Kilo Zero. Nope. KF. So what? mine is... Oh, yeah. Mine's KF. Sorry. And you're technically not supposed to broadcast without, like, the license. If the FCC rolled up here... Got my license in the pocket. Show it. Show it. Yeah. Show it. Yeah. You, you don't Mr. have to, like, FCC. show the address and stuff, but... And your license is here because we're at your house. Right? Yeah. So you have a copy yes, it's, of it's in my file cabinet right there. Plus, it's electronically available. You know? I have it on one password as well. Yeah. And you might notice we're both wearing these city shirts. We're yeah, going to right. a soccer game tonight. And not we won't players, be broadcasting. Not players. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to press the button on here. And it's going <sighs> to... Here, hold it up so that the camera focuses on the okay. thing. Okay. Hold it on the same focal plane. The camera's over there. So I'm going to press the button. Let go. I did. Oh. See, I didn't hear anything. We're, We're not hitting it. We're underground. Okay, we'll cut that part out so that the FCC doesn't come for us. <laughs> I'm trying to make it so that we're entirely legal. Nobody in the comments can complain and talk yes, to the FCC. Exactly. We're going to have to go outside or somewhere else to do our first actual contact with each other. Copy, copy. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Loud and clear. KF0MYB for K... KF0MYJ. This is KF0MYJ. Responding, how are you? I'm good. You're a little bit staticky, but uh, I can at least hear you. Think down, so. Well, I'm good, but I'm hot. It's very hot. Yeah, I uh, let you go outside while I'm inside in the air conditioning. Yeah, how, how does that work? I don't get that one at all. All right, well, I'm going to wrap up this conversation, KF0MYB, and I will talk to you later. All right, KF0MYJ.
<laughs> All right, and that was at five o'clock local time, plus 10 is 10 o'clock, 2200 UTC. That was our first contact uh, with KF0MYB to KF0MYJ. So I will be sending my dad a QSL card in the mail for that. So I sent my first radio contact QSL card, a time-honored tradition in the ham community. And I found out radio, especially of the analog handheld variety, isn't as straightforward as pushing a button like on one of these family radio service walkie-talkies like I'm used to. But we'll keep experimenting, and we'll see you on the airwaves. Oh, and here's what the rest of the shirt says.